most intimidating and passionate environments in all of college football. More than 87,000 will be watching that eagle fly overhead and getting set to back their beloved Auburn Tigers. There's nothing quite like a great rivalry matchup in college football. The bitterness, the intensity, the lifetime of memories that will come as a result of what we're about to see in this one. As we'll see the number one team in the country, the Georgia Bulldogs, taking on another SEC rival, the Auburn Tigers. For EA Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. Time to get this game started. Auburn will kick off to get us underway. And they desperately wanted to attempt a return, but decided not to. Instead, they'll take the touchback. So the Georgia Bulldogs offense is on the field for the first time today. This rivalry is intense, guys, but with all of the connections between the two, it's more like a family feud more so than a bitter war. And for example, about the connections, Reese, how about Vince Dooley, longtime Georgia coach? He went to Auburn. How about great player Pat Dye, All-American at Georgia? Coaches at Auburn. The connections are real. The rivalry is real. This crowd trying to make life miserable for this offense. They're going to ride this running back. They pick up half of it. It'll be second and five. The Bulldogs pulled one out of the fire and beat Auburn in a close one the last time these two met. Yeah, it was a really good one in the Deep South's oldest route. We've seen so many great games in this matchup, and that was one of them. But Georgia came away with it, and Auburn got to think about that for a whole year. On the run, it's ETN. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. And there was no space, nowhere to go. That play went absolutely nowhere. Sometimes you just need a dude to show up and make a play, and he did. Sometimes you just need to block that dude. They did. Decibels rising as the crowd gets behind this defense on third down. Looking to pass. It's back. Fires to the wideout. Working the middle. Big play for this offense as they get it to the 32. And listen, the defense knew coming into this one, they were going to target him early and often. He is a weapon, and there's no mystery where the quarterback's going to be looking on critical down and distances. Let's see how they're able to cover him throughout the rest of this game. This Georgia offense moving quickly down the field. Leaves it with the back. And he goes out of bounds after coming up with positive yardage there. Yeah, this coaching staff, they're getting this offensive line lathered up and into a rhythm. Now they're letting him drive off the ball on first down on these running plays. They're getting chunks of yardage. Good spot after that seven-yard pickup on first down. It's second and three. He's looking to throw. He is lucky to get that one back, and the last thing you want is to turn it over on your opening drive. Guys, only Minnesota and Wisconsin have played more often than Auburn and Georgia. This rivalry is rich in tradition. And you're right, Reese. This goes back to 1892. A long time. This game has been heated. You know a bunch of the names, a bunch of the storylines. And speaking of storylines, how about the mascot for Georgia? Literally trying to bite an Auburn wide receiver. That's how real this rivalry is. He's brought down, but he's got him inside the 10. First and goal from the eighth. Third down and short is exactly what you want on offense because you can run the football, make the defense suck up, but you can also throw it. Nice execution, third and short. Now set up in a first and goal situation. Fans are bringing the noise on first and goal. Makes the catch, and he will score. Touchdown, Georgia! You want to talk about a great way to start the game and set the tone early. It's so nice to have a quarterback just get himself into the game and get himself established. You make a couple throws, you lead your offense down the field, you score right off the bat. Could not have been a better start for that QB.
Now they'll line up for what they hope is automatic. And the extra point makes it 7 0. So a well executed eight play, 75 yard drive. And they finish things off with an eight yard toss for the score. Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. He'll bring it out. It's Jackson. I know he thinks he can house every return, but sometimes you just have to take a knee as he stopped at the 14. So Auburn's offense will go to work for the first time today. And who says you can't find big-time tight ends anymore? Both of these teams certainly have. In modern college football, Reese, tight ends are becoming a bigger and bigger part of offenses, and what a treat today. We get two of the best in the nation. Yeah, going head-to-head, -head, catch for catch. Uh, I'll be interested to see which offense uses them differently and can find ways to maximize these guys' strengths because they're ballers. Second and ten after the previous play. Looking for a man. It's Thorne. They'll run the screen. And it will be a pickup of nine. They're facing a third and one. There's a lot of different ways this offense can attack you throwing the ball. One of them is getting the running back going. And the screen is a great way to get him lathered up and get the defense starting to think about him a little bit more now. Passing game very effective on second down. What about here on third? They'll stick to the ground looking for the marker. And he's knocked down, but not before moving the chains. And listen, the offensive line has to do their job, but a really good job by the running back understanding where his hole is. Go hit it. Get the first down. Don't mess around. Nice job following his hole. Getting positive yards. Here comes Auburn to the line on first and ten. Right back to the well. Can't get him to the ground. Good job running tough and behind his pads as he gets up to the 38-yard line. It's really frustrating when you get a guy in his spot. He's in the hole. He's there to do his job. And he can't get the guy on the ground. That's your job. Get him on the ground. You know, especially a guy that's not a huge back. You've got to make that tackle. You can't make it easy on the offense where now they got a, a manageable situation. Out of the gun to give to the back. They'll get him on the ground at the 46, and it'll be a first down. This guy's a game changer at the running back position, man. Don't you just feel like you have to be if you're going to be toting the rock at Auburn? Bo Jackson obviously won a Heisman Trophy. Cadillac Williams, Ronnie Brown on the same team at the same time. And then Tank Bigsby here in recent years, too. Physical runners, but they also had speed. They were the total package, and I think this guy fits right into that category. Working that left side. Oh, what a big play for this offense as they get it to the 33-yard line. And a really good job by the quarterback being very decisive. He saw his matchup, he went for it, he attacked it, got the positive gain. I would say he's going to find that guy a few more times today. Auburn to the line in a hurry. Trying to find his man on first down. Complete to the right. And he'll run into the end zone. Touchdown, Tiger. What a nice start for this offense. The throw game getting working, getting the touchdown pass. This quarterback getting a little bit of confidence. This passing game getting in a rhythm. Nice start for this offense. Getting set for the point after. Splits those uprights right in half. So a drive there of 85 yards. And they finish things off with a scoring toss from the 33. All tied up and just about set to kick it away. And it'll come out to the 25. No attempt at a return. And Georgia ready to go back to work on offense. 
And David, how they would love to stick it in the end zone one more time after that last drive. And once you get the defense on their heels and you back them off a little bit, you get in a little bit of rhythm, it's really hard to stop Jesse. And they're going to try to do it again right here. And if you're this play caller, you're loving what's happening right now because everything you dialed up on that last drive ended up working out. You're just looking at your play sheet. Everything you're picking is working. Let's see if they can pull it off again here. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. And you can tell that play went nowhere from the start. It was definitely a great play by that defender. Oh, yeah, he got the backfield so quick, the running back had absolutely no chance. As they get set to snap it, just about to reach the end of the quarter. To the air. It's back. Fires to the middle. All kinds of room to throw that one in there. And he was loose and in the open field and on his way. A tremendous pickup on that one. It's been punch, counterpunch throughout the early part of this game as we take a look at the first quarter stats. They fought to a standstill in the first. Let's see who gets the edge early in the second. A new set of downs after the completion. Out of the gun, they'll run it inside. And he's able to find a little bit of running room before they get him down. You want to talk about making it easy for an offensive coordinator. You pick up a bunch of yards on first down, make that second down really, really manageable. That's a great job by the offense. They can really be aggressive after that last play at second and three. Wide receiver coming across in motion. Feeling some heat. And the defense will corral the quarterback, and down he goes at midfield. Well, they tried the play fake, but it fooled absolutely nobody. And that's the problem with play-action pass, Reese, is that it takes time to develop. The quarterback's got to fake the handoff. The receivers generally are running routes further downfield, so the offensive line has got to be able to hold up that extra second to give their QB an opportunity. They weren't able to do it there. Better find the ear plugged. Here comes the noise. Backing this defense on third down. Wide open downfield. He'll work his way down to the 28. They flexed out that tight end a little bit, and you know the tight end's always open. Always open. Quarterback's best friend. And this guy's a problem, Reese. He's a matchup problem because he's too big for DBs to cover, and he's too fast for linebackers to cover. He's showing you his athleticism there. On the ground, it's Etienne. Knocked down after a gain of one to the 27. And a lot of times you want those big plays. You want those splash plays. But sometimes you're going to take some losses. You're not going to run the football overly well. But if you continue to run, you can at least create some balance. You at least have the threat of them. Otherwise, you're just going to abandon it. And now it's just going to be a passing game. Leaves it with the running back. Couldn't fight his way out of his grasp. How about the defender being a heat-seeking missile? He was on radar lock. He found the football and flew down with some bad intentions. Third down has been right in the wheelhouse on this drive. They've already converted a couple of times, but they need the full 10 yards now. Throws to the wideout. He's got an open man. He stopped just short of the goal line at the one. An explosive play as him set up. I love that from this offense. Three is good. You're in field goal range. But now we're set up with first and goal because of great third down execution by this offense. Stay aggressive. Even when you get in this part of the field when everything shrinks and gets a little bit harder, you still want to be aggressive. Pushes ahead. And will cruise into the end zone. Touchdown, Dogs! Follow the block. The offensive line will take you to the Hallelujah Land. And I tell you what, most of the time, Reese, it requires a little bit of skill to find that hole and, you know, slither through a little crack. That was not a crack. That was wide open. Didn't take a lot of vision because the blocking was outstanding. He'll try to tack on one more. On 
And the extra point is true, and they're on top by seven. They go 83 yards on the drive, and they capped it off with a one-yard punch. Almost ready to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. He'll bring it out. It's Jackson. And the returner will be knocked down. Now here comes that Auburn offense onto the field again. Now they need to put something together to answer that last score. There's a lot of pressure, too, on this offense to have to execute at a high level. They've got to score points, David, but they can't go too fast because their defense right now is tied. And I think that's the difficulty being a play player. Like, I have to balance all of those things. My defense is a little bit tired. I can't put on the field, but i got to be aggressive because this is a back-and-forth type game. So a lot to process and think about. Now on first and 10 from the 26. They're getting this guy lathered up. Runs ahead and powers his way for four yards out to the 30. Man down on the play as the officials take a break to let him be checked out. After the productive first down play, it's second and six. They'll run it from the gun. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Great job by the whole defense, but how about the little bitty defensive back throwing his face in the fan? I ain't scared. I don't just cover guys. I make tackles. Ball's at the 27. This offense facing a third and long. They go to the draw. What a nice job on the ground, working his way ahead for seven yards and leaving them with fourth and short. They're about two yards away. Auburn sends out the punting unit. The clock has reached the two-minute mark, and they have a chance to at least cut into this lead before the break. The punt team makes its way onto the field. Looking for a block. It's Evans. They'll get down and put a stop to the return at about the 28-yard line. We're ready to get another look at this Bulldog offense. They'll throw it on first down. Finds a tight end. And he was able to get away from one tackle, but plenty of help was on the way. Decent pickup on that play. A nice job by the defense there tackling the catch and smothering the tight end. They know this offense is going to try to find him in the passing game in a lot of different situations. That time, perfect coverage. And nice job bringing the big guy down. Not easy to do. Unloads to the wideout. Incomplete. And he threw that one up for grabs and into traffic. And fortunate to get it back. Oh, that hit him in a bad spot. Right in the hands. Great play. You still get a pass breakup. But, man, that could have been an interception by the defender there. Nice break on the football, but secure that big fall and get the six. Get the pick six. A strike downfield. And he almost ran away from everybody on that one. A huge pickup on that play. When you're a playmaker like this guy is, your coaches are going to dial up plays intended for you, especially on third down. That's what you saw in that last play. There was no question where the quarterback was going with that football. All week long, they decided on the biggest downs of this game, we're going to target our best player, and we're going to make sure that he gets looks. It doesn't matter what the coverage is. You saw it right there on that the offense quickly calls timeout to stop the clock. This offense has a second down play. Back to the air one more time. Snagged in the middle, it's Thomas. They make the stop, but not before he takes a chunk out of what they need to move the sticks. Nice completion here to this wide receiver. And you're going to see this receiver line up in different spots all over the field all game long. Defense has got to keep their eye on where this guy is because they know he's a big part of this offense's success. Got it in the middle. It's Delp. And he was knocked down immediately short of the line to gain. They'll have to make a decision here. They'd hope to be able to pick up enough after the catch, but a good stop leaves them with a fourth and short. Really good job by the defense being physical, understanding the situation in the game. The ball's going to come out quick. You know that.
go make the tackle, force the fourth down. No, no good. And the margin remains at seven after the miss. second quarter that means it's time to join Kevin in our halftime update thanks so much guys and I need not tell you rivalry games always bring out a ton of emotion and no surprise we saw just that in the first half today and I get it a lot of coaches will say the difference between winning and losing comes down to stopping big plays and getting big plays but if you ask me it's more about how good you are on third down and how efficient you are in keeping drives a lot those two stats can help you break the will of even the best defenses and help you come out on top. That said, let's get back to the field and our guys in the booth to see who comes out on top of this rivalry contest. He thought about bringing that out for a half second, but he'll take a knee and they'll bring it to the 25. And Auburn is ready to go back to work on offense. Tight game as we start the third quarter, and we'll see what type of adjustments they made at halftime. And getting the ball first here, I think, is such a big deal. Like, I get the first chance to make a statement, to make the adjustments, to create some momentum for my squad right here in the third quarter. Yeah, I think it's so important for this offense to set the tone here early in the second half, to get a nice drive going, build that confidence, and, and get your defense ready to come on out, get a stop, and change the complexity of this game. A hand to the running back. These little games can start to add up as he gets it up to the 34. Keep pounding away at this defense and make them play the run. If you can get this many a chunk, they're going to have to commit more guys to the box, more guys to the run. Then you open it up for the passing game. The Tigers are in the hurry up. On third and short, trying to impose their will and move the chains. Oh, and what a move! What a juke, and he makes it past the mark. Yeah, a nice job dialing up that short yardage situation play call there, David. They needed one yard, he picked up two. Yeah, great job up front, great job by the back, knowing where they need to go. Nice having a hole you can get through and not have to just do it all on your own as a running back. Little touch pass to the receiver. Fakes his man out. Pretty good effort on that one to work his way up to the 42. Man, the defense, you hold your breath. When this receiver has the football out in space, you have got to make sure you're playing with outstanding pursuit. Nice job there, but as this game goes on, they've got to keep an eye on this guy and make sure they know where he is at all times. From the gun, the running back has it. Nifty little dance step. Is that stiff arm even a human arm? It, it looks like some type of steel bludgeoning device on his way to a first down. Auburn going to work with another first down. Might as well run him until they stop him. He's got it again. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. You know, the one thing you can say about this defense, they pursue the football. The first guy might miss, the second guy might miss, but there's going to be more and more hats flying to the ball carry. You saw it on that play, getting a tackle for loss. Lost one on that last one. It's second and 11. Looking downfield, it's Thorne. Finds his man down the middle. He's brought down quickly. Minimal gain there, still a bit short of the first down. The thing I like about the slot receiver, he's really intentional in his route run. The quarterback always knows exactly where he's going to be on the field. They've got great chemistry. They've started a pretty good drive. This will be the seventh play, but they need to convert third and five. From the gun, wants to pass. Finds his back in the middle. And they knocked him down, but he got past the line to gain. And on third down, they find a way to get the ball in the back end space and move the chance. And that's a play the defender would like to have back. They like to think that they can cover running backs on these types of angle routes, but there, 
just not good enough on the coverage, and that allowed the offense to convert that third down. Wants to throw on first down, using the back as a receiver on the screen. They finally get him stopped, but what a good job by that front wall to set up the screen and create some lanes for their running back. And there you go. You see, you don't have to throw bombs to get big plays in the passing game. Just screen it to your running back. As soon as he catches it, he gets upfield. And how about the downfield blocking by these linemen and the wide receivers as they rip off that explosive play? To the ground with the back. Good pick up on that play. It'll bring up second and four. I know it's sexy to throw the football, but if you can pound it away and get these kind of gains, they will just add up, wear the defense down, get first downs, and ultimately get some points. Six-yard pickup on first down leaves them with second and four. From the gun, they'll try to impose their will. Going to be a gain of about three down to the 21. Already in chip shot field goal range at the 21, but this third and short, they're still thinking touchdown. Back to throw, it's Thorne. He's right on target. A quick tackle made, but he's got plenty for the first down. That's tough on the defense there. Third down, you're in zone coverage. Everybody's watching the quarterback, and you're trying to make a break on the ball, but he just got it out of his hands too quickly, and the throw was too accurate. Really nothing you can do there, and it's now a fresh set of downs. They've marched to the red zone, and here they go. And it's caught! Touchdown, Auburn! There have been miniseries, novels, movies, long-form plays that have been over in a shorter period of time than that drive. That was a marathon. And that's just so frustrating when you're a defensive guy time and time again trying to get the stops, and they just keep making the plays, and they punch it in for a touchdown. Demoralizing. Lining up for the PAT. And the extra point was good. No incident there. And we are tied up in the third. Precise, relentless execution on that 13-play scoring drive. And they finish it up with a 15-yard scoring toss. After that latest answer tied things up, just about set to kick it away again. On the run from inside his own five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. And Georgia ready to go back to work on offense. You want to talk about taking the wind out of your sails, drive the ball down the field, and miss the field goal, David. You know what? Don't leave it up to kickers. Execute better offensively. I think you move the ball nice. you got to keep that in mind. But Palmer, I think you got to stay aggressive and don't settle for field goals. Yeah, because you got to know there's just no margin for error right now. You just have got to be able to execute at home. This has been a tight one. Third quarter all tied up. It's now second and ten. To the air. It's back. The quarterback's a little more on target there. Maybe they hook up, but it's an incompletion. And how nice is it to have the home crowd going absolutely bananas? Communication is harder. But the snapping the football, everybody being on time. Man, this crowd really affected the football game. Here comes this home crowd as the defense tries to get off the field on third. And the quarterback goes down at the 11-yard line. on our hands all tied up as we take a peek at the stats. These two teams about to find out what they're made of as we open the fourth all tied up. 
Georgia sends out the punt team. Three and out and not much choice but to get rid of the ball. He only needs a sliver of daylight. The solid return there offsets some of the punt yardage and really sets up this offense nicely. They'll start this drive with a pass. Just too much juice on that one as he airmails his receiver out of bounds. Well, no surprise there on defense, right? You know the QB is going to be trying to target this guy. Nice job in coverage forcing that incompletion. Ball still at the 45. After the incompletion, they'll snap it second and 10. They'll ride the running back and leave it with him. And a nice solid pickup there before the defense wrestles him to the ground. I like it. Just frustrate the defense. Get that five to six yards. Make him honor the run. Make him know that you're willing to run the football and run it effectively. It would be nice to pick up a few yards on third down because from here, it's a 57-yard attempt. Looking for a man. It's Thorne. Fires to the wideout. Makes the grab. Finally run out of bounds, but he has this offense rolling with a first down. Wow, and what a great job by that quarterback, finding his open receiver on third down. You know, guys, one of the most telling stats at the end of the game is third down conversion percentage. If you're a great third down team, it's invaluable to your offensive success, and that's why teams drill third down so much in practice. Trying to run, it's Hunter. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Auburn! And with that, they've got the lead here in the second half. I love running backs that have a nose for the goal. Understand how to get there, finish strong into the end zone. Know I get six, and then go celebrate with you. On to attempt to try. The extra point is good, and now in the fourth, they're up by a touchdown and an extra point. Quick work on that scoring drive, just four plays. And they finished it with a beautiful 15-yard run for the score. About to kick it off after punching it in for the touchdown. Fielded in the end zone, it's Bell. I know he thinks he can house every return, but sometimes you just have to take a knee as he stopped at the 14. Across the 25, he's got room. He is tackled, but it'll be a fresh set of downs. It'll be first and ten from the 30. The give on the inside. Finds enough room to get three out to the 34. I never know if it's grammatically correct to say a team is being out physical. You hear it a lot in football, though. That's happening in this game. They are just not getting the push they need all game long up front to have any success when they decide to run. After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. Off the boot, looking for his man. Catch in the middle, it's Thomas. And they don't drag him down until he gets all the way to the 46-yard line. I'll tell you, man, I love quarterbacks that have arm talent, but that can throw it accurately at the same time. And you saw all of it on that in route. Big drive for this offense late, trying to tie the game. They piece together a couple of first downs, and here they come again. On the ground, it's Etienne. And they try to run inside, and there is nowhere to go. Well, they want to come out and try to get the run game established, but up front defensively, they made a play. They gave up nothing on that one. You've got to find some breathing room if you're going to establish yourself on the ground, and there wasn't any that time. Yeah, Reese, I wonder now if this offense is maybe going to try to get to the perimeter of the field and see if they can use their speed to hurt this defense. Caught behind the line. It's dealt. And the big fella couldn't elude the quarterback who makes a sure tackle. 
really good job working through his progression. You get it to him quickly, and the big tight end has a chance to run a little. And a really good job by the QB throwing an accurate throw. I, I got to hit those guys on the move, on the run, so they can do this. They can catch the football, get upfield, and chew up some extra yards. And boy, is he close to that first down, maybe just a couple of inches short. And I think this offense ran the football knowing it's in fourth down territory. It, it's fourth and short. It's go time, almost near midfield. To me, this is green light. I got to stay aggressive. I'm losing, but the situation favors me in fourth and short. Now on the option, he'll pitch it. Stop short of the marker. And he's stopping his defense, and they get the ball back. Here comes the biggest drive for this defense. They need this stop the way the rest of us need oxygen. And they knocked him down almost immediately. Oftentimes with play action, you're asking the quarterback to hold on to the ball a bit longer, and you're asking this offensive line to hold up and pass pro a bit longer. Against this athletic front seven on defense, it's going to be tough. We've reached a two-minute warning in this offense, trying to milk this clock and keep time on their side. Negative play on first down. That's what a defense always wants. They'll keep it on the ground, trying to milk the clock. Just working and poking and prodding and finding his way up to the 36. Quick timeout called by the defense, stopping the clock to save as much time as possible for their offense. Big third down play here. If they get a stop, you'll see an immediate timeout. Looking for a crease, it's Hunter. He is going nowhere. Stop at the line of scrimmage. Defense uses a timeout quickly, trying to get that ball back and preserve time for their offense. Auburn's going to have to send out the punt team. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. They'll get down and put a stop to the return at about the 28-yard line. We're ready to get another look at this Bulldog offense. This is everything you could hope for in a rivalry game like this. Close game, waning moments, history waiting to be made, guys. And it's moments like this why you come and play for these two schools, right? To play in a game like this, in a rivalry like this, in a situation, David, game on the line late, who's going to take it? And you know when you make this play, you're immortalized. With this kind of rivalry, these are the highlights that we've shown for years. Everybody be like, I remember when so-and-so made that play against our biggest rival to seal the deal. Tremendous awareness to get what he could and get out of bounds. And now the offense trying to score one late. It's amazing in college football, the tight end position and how much has changed. Back in the day, you're a blocking guy. Maybe you catch a flat route. Today, these guys have athleticism, and you just saw it from that dude after the catch on that last one. Maybe this will breathe a little life into this offense, which has been flatlined in the second half. Here's first and ten. Going to try to pop one on the screen. And he's chased out of bounds, but not before he gets the first down, stops the clock, and has them on the move trying to get the late score. What a great individual effort here in this two-minute situation. He makes the catch in the middle of the field. He knows he's got to find a way to stop the clock. The only way to do that is to get out of bounds. He uses his speed and his vision, and he's able to elude the defense to save some time. Off the play fake on first down. Gets it out fast. Excellent job working through the air there, finding a hole in that defense and picking up a first down. That was a really nice catch and an even better run after the grab. Yeah, and get the ball to your playmaker. What's good about having him in the slot is he can go either direction. You can get him matched up on somebody that's not as fast. And you watch, he can run away from those linebackers or safeties. They're trying to get to him. Setting up the screen. And the catch and run into the end zone. Touchdown, Bulldogs! Georgia. What a massive play by this offense. Man, you needed it. Great execution. Now kick the extra point, tie this football game up late, or do you go for two? Do you go for the win? Do you try to take the lead? That is a you decision.
So you think this is automatic? This extra point attempt is filled with pressure. And it's good, and we're tied in the fourth quarter. A very efficient five-play scoring drive. And what a huge score and extra point there to get it tied in the final minute. Here comes the kickoff as we are all tied up in the fourth quarter. On the move from inside his five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. Now here comes that Auburn offense onto the field again. They'll throw it on first down. Grabbed in the middle. It's Fairweather. Makes the stop at the 33, but it's a 15-yard gain. Timeout on the field, and everybody want to make sure they're organized as we come down the gut of the game. Back to pass. It's Thorne. Quick completion on the out. The offense uses a timeout to stop the clock, and they'll get a quick breather. Now on first down from the 43-yard line. Looking to move it through the air. Throws to the wideout. And that incomplete pass caused by the big hit on first down. Second down coming. That's a ball that this offense should be able to complete. They had the coverage they wanted. Receiver ran on the route. Just an inaccurate throw by the quarterback. That incompletion leads to second down and 10. He's looking to throw. Got it in the middle. It's fair weather. The offense will use a timeout with 25 seconds left. Now this defense could really use a stop on third down as the offense has had its way. From the gun, wants to pass. Fires to the middle. Finds a man by himself. Offense on the move. A big play there. Gets it to the 30. There's a reason third down is called the money. What a great find by the quarterback. Great job finding his receiver. Uh, at the end of the game, you look at third down percentages. It tells a huge story, and it goes a long way in deciding who wins a football game. Auburn lines up quickly. Quickly gets everyone set. They spike it to stop the clock. Brings up second down. And if the kicker can put one through, this will be a successful drive. They'll use the timeout six seconds left on the clock. And the line of scrimmage is the 30. That'll leave them a 47-yard attempt and a chance to win the game. He's got it. Showing off that big leg from 47 yards out. It is a nerve-wracking feeling as a football player when the game comes down to your kicker. And he has to come through. And Palmer, he comes through with flying colors. And you know in college football, no field goal is automatic. But there's no college kicker situation here. He drills that right through the uprights. And David, it looks like his team's getting the dub. So after putting three on the board, the kickoff team is out there ready to boot it away. He'll bring it out from inside his own 10. And the returner runs out of real estate as he goes down. 